So first of all, thank you for inviting me. I will uh, try to present uh, an overview of uh, the Italian situation concerning the digital humanities based on the experience we had uh, in this, uh, let's say, two years, uh, one year and a half of uh, uh, DARIA initiatives. And uh, uh, I will use uh, some uh, generic uh, um, level uh, uh, to explain the overall situation and I will try to focus uh, on uh, uh, an example which is uh, made using a particular community, the community of historians, which proved to be uh, some kind of uh, uh, central community for our uh, Italian situation. So here is a, a short uh, summary of the points I will... Uh, uh, oh, fifth point is not... Uh, uh, okay, disappeared somewhere. Uh, it was... Uh, um, I don't remember what, we will see. So, uh, summary. Uh, I, w I was really interested in uh, the first presentation, in the second presentation, because uh, our uh, German colleagues say that uh, they have this word of Wissenschaft, which is keeping together everything connected to the knowledge generation pass, uh, regardless uh, of the domains, humanities, science, whatever. So uh, this is not really the same situation we have in Italy. Uh, because uh, uh, the old book uh, from uh, uh, Charles Snow published in the early 60s in Italy is still for certain regards, uh, uh, so to say, uh, mm, valid. Uh, we have uh, not so much level of connection between the two hemispheres, the humanities and the art sciences, or if you prefer the humanities and the cultural heritage uh, applications, for example, whatever is laying on the glams, uh, the, gal the galleries, libraries, archives, and museums uh, uh, section. So we uh, face still a fragmented, a really fragmented uh, situation, and this is uh, uh, evident when you have a look at the different ways that humanities uh, uh, scholars have in producing, collecting managing, also validating uh, everything connected to the uh, life cycle of the data th they are dealing with compared to the uh, art scientists. Uh, everybody working, uh, for example, in uh, uh, cultural heritage restoration has quite a different uh, perception of what uh, an infrastructure means in terms of um, supporting uh, some particular research process uh, using some particular tool or application in order to work with this kind of uh, uh, stuff. So we have uh, really a different, uh, two different uh, uh, landscapes in terms of uh, mm, life cycle of the data sets and of the information produced by the uh, humanities scholars and uh, the uh, data sets uh, and uh, the data life cycle that are coming from, for example, the cultural uh, heritage applies, uh, appliances domain. This is, uh, uh, of course, uh, producing some kind of different perception of what a digital research infrastructure should do for, the, uh, for a given community. Uh, this is uh, taking me to uh, reflect a bit on what is the uh, meaning, at least for uh, our Italian uh, experience, of the uh, digital humanities definition. Um, this is uh, still uh, a valid definition, of course, because it is based on uh, many experiences, uh, starting from the late uh, 50s of the past century with the works uh, and uh, experiments of Father Roberto Busa, indexing uh, uh, everything connected to the works of Thomas Aquinas, and so is not new. So it's, uh, it could be used as a working definition, but this working definition is exposing us to some uh, problems, uh, which are mostly uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, the, sorry, 
with the lack of uh, a common epistemological and methodological background unifying everything that is uh, related to the many, many domains and disciplines in the uh, humanities, uh, which is also linked to the lack of a common set of widely adopted and spread standards, and of course to the lack of uh, uh, a reliable and widely adopted set, uh, set of uh, uh, key performance indicators and evaluation frameworks for specifically uh, tailored for the digital humanities products. So I keep uh, seeing the screen because on my computer is uh, the, the screen is not working, so I have to <laughs> to do this. So sorry uh, if I am not uh, looking at you, but uh, I'm looking at the screen. So um, we are now moving from the paradigm of digital humanities, at least in our set of uh, country um, priorities. So moving from digital humanities to data science. Uh, data science is uh, nothing new because you could have a timeline uh, also uh, I, I report here a shortened uh, chronology of the history of data science which is starting uh, in 1962 so it's nothing new is nothing uh, that uh, uh, is uh, so to say uh, a, a new phenomenon so uh, our uh, priorities, and I will uh, in the next slides try to give you uh, an example of uh, this uh, new uh, approach, is um, to move from data to knowledge. So adding uh, different layers of trust, of provenance, of many, many, many important things that uh, uh, are connected to the, uh, what I've called uh, before the knowledge generation paths, so the ways that scholars uh, are using in order to produce data and uh, information uh, in, the, in a digital uh, environment. And so we are moving from this uh, old uh, paradigm of digital humanities into this new, uh, not really new, but for our domain new paradigm of data science. I will skip everything connected to this timeline, but you will see some in bold some uh, interesting facts, uh, knowledge discovery in databases, data mining, and knowledge discovery in databases are to be considered keywords uh, shaping this, uh, um, this, up, this new approach. Enabling research and education in the, in the 21st century, and an important question. We have a lot of data, but uh, how can we uh, use this data in order to uh, answer, in order to uh, uh, solve scient relevant scientific problems? This is a key uh, that uh, we are using in order to shape our new uh, approach. And uh, if you wonder what uh, we intend, what kind of definition we have about data science uh, is mostly connected to obtain and manage, explore, model, and interpret everything that is connected to the information we produce using digital tools and uh, uh, encoding digital information. So I will uh, uh, only point you to the uh, last two lines of the slide. Uh, we uh, also think that data science uh, is something connected to mm, computer aching, data analysis, and most of all problem solving, because we have a bunch of data, we could have big data, but without a solid set of uh, research questions, everything uh, will be, uh, I don't want to say useless, but not so uh, game-changing as we expect. So, uh, I am now uh, moving from a general kind of perspective, uh, trying to focus better uh, the example of the historical community. And I will use the example of the uh, medieval uh, research community. 
So, uh, in this slide, uh, the important thing is that uh, uh, we are uh, facing a situation where uh, everything connected to the digital environment is bigger now than, than ever, and uh, we are uh, forced to deal with this digital environment and with this big fragmentation we have in the digital environment because everything we need from tools to information, publication, data sets is now not uh, in the analog world but is into this new uh, digital uh, uh, environment uh, which is uh, growing faster than ever and uh, as you can uh, read in the last line by 2007 reached the 97% of the world's storage capacity, which is a huge amount of data, 300 exabytes. So, this uh, led Bruno Latour uh, into the uh, last year's uh, uh, Yale Tenor Lecture uh, during uh, the, and he repeated this during the Digital Humanities for 2014 conference in Lausanne that in the digital era, our scholarly research as historians, as medievalists, but it could be generalized for other domains, is uh, moving from the medieval vertical standalone uh, scriptorium, one is working alone, to this new digital scriptorium. So we have to face the challenges that the data uh, that are in this new uh, digital environment are uh, bringing to, uh, to us. And so uh, this, uh, uh, this kind of new metaphor of the digital screenatorium is really fit, in my opinion, to describe this new uh, situation. So, uh, now switch again to the general uh, situation. Daria IT is not uh, made only uh, of institutions, uh, of uh, uh, partners uh, coming from uh, uh, the humanities uh, domain, but is made of a bunch of institutions, more than 20, coming from the public and the private uh, uh, sector, that are dealing with a vast number of disciplines covering art sciences, cultural heritage, humanities, history, literary studies, whatever you can uh, imagine. And then I will show you uh, this kind of uh, uh, richness. So you can uh, spot CNR, which s uh, stands for the National Council for Research. You can spot some ministerial agency, like the number 10, uh, which is the uh, agency, uh, agency um, um, connected to the work of the public libraries in Italy. And we have on number 11 the National uh, Institution for N Nuclear Physics. We have uh, some uh, universities, namely uh, Siena, Pisa, Roma, Bologna uh, and others, and also Bari. And we have uh, private institutions like uh, the one that I'm coming from, uh, number 15, uh, which is uh, dealing with uh, um, historical studies uh, rooted in the medieval past. So uh, quite uh, a vast uh, uh, variety of, uh, of uh, partners and of disciplines. Um, for uh, last year, Sorry for the typo, it should be figures. Uh, uh, we had 22 partners providing uh, a total amount of contributions, uh, about uh, two millions and a half euros, uh, divided into, uh, let's say, 30, mm, something more uh, coming from CNR and universities, uh, and uh, uh, 700,000 uh, euros coming from uh, other research institutions uh, dealing with the GLAMS and the uh, private sectors. Uh, about the disciplines, uh, we used these uh, um, uh, this, uh, uh, lists provided by the DARIA EU uh, uh, Central Office, which is listing 27 different disciplines, and we uh, uh, found out that every possible disciplines connected to the DARIA action 
was actually covered uh, by, uh, Ita by our Italian network of partners. And uh, uh, on top of this list, we have cultural heritage and uh, museology, art and art history, literature, history, and uh, uh, archaeology, uh, and prehistory. Uh, in terms of typologies, so uh, kind of services, objects that are offered by the partners, uh, we have uh, uh, most of those uh, contributions linked to uh, access, so granting access to uh, data sets and uh, uh, services. Uh, then on second place, uh, tools and softwares are uh, widely represented. And then we have something connected to the training and education uh, sector, which is expertise, someone who is willing to provide you this kind of expertise uh, if you need, uh, for example, to build a database, a, a segment of research infrastructure uh, laying in your own domain or something like this, and even training and uh, event organization and content hosting. This is the general uh, situation we had in Italy last uh, year. Everything that I showed you is connected to the Daria organization, which is divided into four big boxes that you can consider linked to uh, the uh, e infrastructure segment, so mostly hardware and uh, um, the facilities you need in order to run actually the infrastructure to uh, the uh, research and uh, education sector, which is VCC, because stands for Virtual Center of Competencies, uh, linked, uh, VCC to the yellow one, linked uh, to education and research. Then you have the uh, third VCC, which is dealing to the practices, to the guidelines, to the rules uh, we have to keep um, the IPR and whatever is laying on the management side of those contents. And then we have the fourth, um, sorry. This is the firewall asking me. And then we have the fourth uh, layer of this organization, which is about outreach and the impact of the uh, services, uh, tools, and expertise provided by this uh, um, infrastructure. So, just to summarize, uh, we realized that uh, everything connected with uh, VCC3, which I recall you is dealing with scholarly content management, so the level of engagement of the scholarly communities, the research communities, in dealing with the contents we produce, we store, we manage into this uh, digital uh, environment is representing uh, roughly 40% of the contributions we have. Then uh, a quarter is represented by VCC2, which is about uh, creating uh, uh, um, links and uh, making the uh, research and the education communities uh, interact with the infrastructure. And then we have another 25%, which is represented by contribution coming from the purely infrastructural uh, uh, section, meaning someone who is willing to provide you high speed connection, like the GAR, which is the Italian institution providing connection for the universities and research centers. And then you have only a small 10% connected to the impact and our outreach, so the performances of the infrastructure. So I will skip these histograms, these bars. I will only try to uh, point you to this uh, table, which is uh, roughly trying to represent the uh, value of the contributions we got from the different VCCs, um, this is useful in order to, uh, so to say, uh, try to have uh, an idea of uh, the uh, weight of each contribution. For example, we have uh, for uh, uh, contributions linked to VCC1, 
uh, we had two uh, institutions providing something like 290,000 euros. Uh, we had uh, another big contribution coming from University of Roma La Sapienza dealing with uh, VCC's 123, meaning something that should be uh, a segment of uh, e-infrastructure dealing with uh, scholarly contents and engaging a vast scholarly community. So this, from this table you can imagine for each VCC, so for each layer of the infrastructure we are dealing with, which is the weight of a given contribution. This is linked to what uh, I will recall at the end, the sustainability of the overall infrastructure. So the business plan, which is uh, uh, ruling and which is uh, uh, behind the, uh, the, 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 li uh, the life of the infrastructure. So in this graph uh, you could have an aggregated, a clustered uh, version of this evaluation and then uh, you can uh, see that uh, uh, roughly uh, a third of the uh, value coming from these contributions uh, were linked to uh, VCC free, which means that, that content is really, really uh, playing a big part in, in our uh, Italian uh, infrastructure. Then uh, you have 15% uh, for VCC 2 and 3, uh, meaning that you have some contribution linked to scholarly contents and engaging some kind of um, scholarly community in the maintainment, uh, in the evolution uh, of these contents. And then you have another 15% uh, coming from a CNR, which is S and TDL, which is a, a digital library of science and technology. So uh, the important part of this slide is that contents are, uh, if you sum uh, the VCC, uh, this 30% uh, and the other two uh, slices, uh, 15 plus 15.4, you could have something like 60% uh, of this uh, uh, whole pie represented by scholarly contents and scholarly communities engagement, which is the core of our action right now. So, I've, uh, I presented you briefly uh, at the beginning the, uh, the typologies of the contribution we expected to have from our partners, and those are the uh, 13 uh, typologies they gave us. As you can imagine, the 13th others, uh, it's opening uh, the uh, situation to, uh, the, to having everything. Uh, coming from our partners. So we uh, uh, try to avoid the partners offering uh, contributions uh, in, this, uh, in, uh, in this other label. Because evaluation, when you face something that is related to others, could be really hard because you cannot have KPIs uh, to evaluate this kind of uh, contributions. So, uh, about uh, the types of contributions we got, uh, access to contents and services is representing the first voice with 17%. Then uh, we have, uh, let me, uh, oh, on, uh, with 12%, uh, uh, we have tools and software. Then uh, we have, uh, with 11%, uh, uh, we have expertise, and then a number of other smaller contributions, uh, in part linked to uh, training and coordination, but the core is access to content and access and sharing of tools and uh, services for the research communities. And this is uh, a simpler version of this uh, um, of this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, aggregated information. So access is the first uh, voice, tools and services the second, expertise and training are uh, following. 
So the core is access and access to content. So uh, about uh, the ratio of this uh, data being collected uh, during the six months of interaction with the partners, we followed the so-called uh, DARIA principles, uh, which are mostly dealing with uh, some organizational uh, matters, with some scientific and technological principles, with some community principles, and which are connected to a number of activities. Now I'm trying to give you some uh, details about this, and uh, uh, once again, uh, you can uh, say that uh, uh, the um, most uh, important uh, uh, voices are about uh, using services and resources, which is 26.8%, uh, be receptive to community needs, which is about engagement of the communities that are taking part in our effort, and then you have uh, the uh, necessity to explain, to not to explain, but to expose high quality services, which is about evaluation and uh, selection of those, uh, of those contents. Only in fourth position came, comes the sustainability matter, which is for us uh, a new level of priority because we realized that a proper infrastructure needs to have a medium or long-term sustainability plan in order to provide what? High quality services and to be receptive to the community needs. So it's not only needed to have needs, but you will require some kind of prerequisite in order to fulfill those needs. So, the science and, techni uh, and technical principles uh, uh, were enable digital arts and humanities, which is the same principle we found in the slides at the beginning, to integrate existing resources, uh, research and services, which is, of course, uh, so to say, uh, a basic, the ABC of uh, every uh, working infrastructure, and then to deliver methodological innovation and to promote interdisciplinary research, which is uh, convincing us to move in the direction of this data science approach. So uh, the community principles uh, are not so interesting, so I will uh, skip this one. And the uh, activities that are linked to the uh, contributions which means uh, which kind of data generation path they followed in order to uh, describe to us what they are giving to us as contributions are uh, uh, linked to data capture, are uh, linked uh, to data enrichment, so semantic enrichment, annotation, and stuff like this, and uh, to uh, the uh, dissemination activities. Those are the three biggest slices in the pie. Then you have uh, uh, issues linked to the storage, but we have not uh, storage among our national priorities yet. And then uh, we have only as a smaller uh, part of the problem the creation, which is representing only 10% of our um, of the contributions we uh, received. So I will skip everything connected with the disciplinary uh, contributions because it's really, really messy, but you could have uh, really the perception that uh, out of 27 different disciplines, we received 27, probably even 28 <laughs> Uh, uh, contributions linked to a specific domain, to a specific uh, uh, kind of uh, research domain. So in terms of richness and variety of our contributions, we are really, really on the safe side. And this is about the kind of objects we gathered. So 
Digital Humanities was on top of this uh, uh, list of contributions we get. Then uh, the uh, data sets uh, and multimedia objects uh, uh, followed. And then another uh, set of uh, different artifacts, uh, maybe 3D representations or uh, things coming from the cultural heritage applied sector uh, were uh, well represented. Stat static images, software and tools uh, are also important in this, uh, uh, in this list. So this is a simplified view of this uh, uh, chart about the methodologies uh, which is uh, again connected to the knowledge generation path that uh, the researchers and the institutions followed in order to produce the contribution they gave us is once again really, really, really uh, messed and uh, everything connected to linked open data, to machine learning, to data and metadata mapping, to uh, named entity recognition and extraction, everything is uh, uh, well, maybe is represented in a very fragmented uh, landscape, and this fragmentation is a keyword uh, for uh, at least uh, the current situation of our uh, part of the infrastructure. So the best, uh, uh, the, 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 on top of the list, we have. Uh, contributions and uh, methodologies linked to information retrieval and uh, content analysis, then linked open data about uh, enrichment and annotation, semantic annotation and stuff uh, like this, and uh, dissemination and publishing, which is uh, connected to the open uh, uh, publishing and the difference between publishing data sets, uh, publishing different kind of objects, is uh, really on top of this list. And then uh, everything connected to the um, scanning, searching, and encoding uh, um, procedures uh, they followed uh, in order to produce the, connect the uh, contribution uh, uh, that uh, we gathered is uh, really also well represented. But uh, now, trying to focusing on our, uh, on the, uh, so to say, narrow communities of the historians dealing with uh, uh, this uh, uh, medieval set of uh, uh, data sets and services, we faced uh, the same situation that I was describing to you. So we faced uh, a void of uh, uh, lack of coordination, sorry. We uh, uh, faced uh, lack of integration, so the, biggest, uh, uh, the bigger picture is representing uh, a situation that we feel that is uh, uh, also valid for the smaller community I'm coming from. So we feel that uh, uh, lack of interoperability, both in technical terms, uh, met different metadata formats, different semantic formats, stuff like this, and also in scientific terms, we have many tesori, we have many authority lists that are not well connected one to another, so it's still valid. And also the problem of having to represent in uh, a sustainable, in an, in an interoperable way, a complex set of different uh, data sets uh, and uh, metadata information uh, trying to provide for uh, our researchers uh, um, advanced tools for uh, data discovery, uh, data analysis, uh, and uh, to provide uh, really interdisciplinary uh, services is uh, still not uh, a goal that is achieved, but uh, a, um, a challenge that has to be faced. So, at the infrastructure level, we are feeling uh, uh, we are calling this richness, and this uh, is uh, uh, an optimistic point of view. On the domain level, I'm coming from this particular domain, so historians uh, dealing with uh, medieval uh, data sets and services, we uh, rather consider it to be lack of interoperability, lack of uh, uh, integration, lack of, the co of coordination. So the infrastructure su should be able to support and to avoid this kind of situation at a bigger, at a, uh, an higher level. 
So why the infrastructure should be doing this? Because we need to solve research questions that are connected to many layers of reality. Physical characteristics of the objects we are studying, for example, manuscripts, they are objects, but they are also uh, objects that have an history origins, provenances, the history of manuscript could be really, really tricky and we need to track uh, all of these uh, uh, historical facts to solve some kind of uh, historically and culturally relevant, uh, um, uh, so to say, research questions. Uh, the, liter the spreading of the literacy in Florence in the 14th century, for example. But we also uh, need uh, tools in order to uh, address and to solve questions about the contents. So not about uh, objects as physical objects, but objects, manuscripts, like uh, containers of works, of particular uh, concepts and stuff like this. So we need also to track the relations between different CHO, cultural heritage objects. This is what we expect to have from this uh, uh, infrastructure. This is an example of what I am describing to you. On top we have an object, which is a manuscript, that is partly a physical object, partly a cultural witness, so uh, transmitting uh, a particular set of contents. The infrastructure should be dealing with this kind of complexity, allowing us to uh, access not only the information related to the source, but also the information related to the literature, the scientific literature connected to those objects in a transnational and multilingual uh, uh, environment. So, you can see the schema is becoming more and more complex if you uh, add uh, other uh, research needs uh, connected to a particular uh, domain. So the infrastructure should be allowing us to deal with a, a vast number of web resources ranging from simple digital images to catalographic descriptions to uh, complex digital uh, representations of those objects. And uh, to be uh, even, even uh, more complicated, we need uh, those web resources to be um, coming from uh, uh, authority lists and vocabularies, uh, different databases pertaining to different aspects of these uh, cultural heritage ob objects we are dealing with. So the situation is really, really becoming complex. So we need tools uh, that are enabling us to connect and to collect the data we need in order to solve our research questions. So this is an example of uh, uh, coming from a project that is Sendari, which is a, a EU-funded project ending uh, uh, now in January uh, next year, dealing with the data sets coming from World War I and medieval culture, and providing something like uh, a virtual research environment uh, with discoverability services, uh, semantic annotation services, and uh, uh, thing, uh, tools like this, uh, in order to address the questions that I have uh, described uh, to you uh, in the uh, slides I've presented. So, first of all, we had to imagine what uh, we wanted to find in this uh, environment. We needed uh, textual corpora, manuscripts uh, and texts we need uh, uh, information about uh, the persons, authors. We need information about uh, uh, li secondary literature. We needed uh, discoverability and interoperability tools. We needed also semantic integration and semantic enrich enrichment tools. So this uh, environment uh, of Sendari should be uh, uh, providing to us this kind of building blocks in order to solve our scientific needs. 
I will skip uh, those uh, slides, but uh, the important fact uh, is uh, to read at least uh, the words in bold, bibliographies, authority lists, manuscript descriptions, inventories of medieval libraries, other thematic uh, databases, digital libraries, uh, reproductions of manuscripts, lexicographical data, and to provide all of this uh, num vast number of different web resources in a connected, in an interoperable way, uh, the environment where, uh, for example, if we deal with uh, 230,000 manuscripts, I need a tool in order to uh, manage different ways of uh, addressing, of identifying those objects, those manuscripts, uh, in an integrated fashion, in uh, using an integrated tool. And this means to map different data and metadata schemas uh, in order to, have a, to get a unified service, an integrated service, an interoperable service, uh, supporting discoverability needs of my community. The same could be said for the names of medieval authors. We have, for example, different databases covering different regions and different uh, thematic aspects or different uh, uh, chronological ranges, and we needed to have, uh, so to say, uh, uh, an interoperable uh, ecosystem that allows uh, our researchers to uh, uh, find what they are interested in. So we had to develop some kind of uh, ex-post interoperability tools because we were not able to, uh, so to say, to impose any kind of standard, any kind of uh, normative or um, uh, even any kind of uh, schema to, uh, the, uh, to the, the institutions that were uh, working with us, because many of them already provided 30 years of work using their own custom uh, tools. So we developed something uh, ex post, so uh, some kind of interoperability tool in order uh, that, were, uh, that should be uh, help our users to, uh, so to say, simplify the fragmented uh, situation I showed you. So I will skip the technicalities. And this is what we wanted to, to have, a kind of environment uh, when one could ask to the infrastructure, to the system, which ki what kind of data regardless of the type uh, of uh, uh, particular uh, specialities of these uh, data sets uh, about uh, a particular object, person, fact, or something like this. So I'll skip. We ended up uh, with those building blocks of services needed to be integrated in our infrastructure. So access to the collections we needed. So discoverability services in order to find the new material that is outside this uh, uh, um, collection set we hosted uh, in our data space. A number of uh, uh, semantic repositories in order to shift from a collection of data to something related to knowledge, so facts about things, about uh, uh, authors, so persons, about facts and the like, and another uh, number of tools uh, uh, mostly connected to knowledge extraction about uh, uh, entities or about uh, the uh, linguistic analysis of uh, uh, texts we are dealing with. So, this, were, uh, this was my need as an historian dealing with medieval times. Uh, I will skip uh, uh, everything and I will uh, uh, come to the end because I already had five uh, extra minutes. And uh, what we found is Daria has 
those goals to be a research infrastructure, so to serve also my community, to act as an integrating activity, so it's perfectly what I'm expecting from Daria to, to, to be, to perform uh, something on the uh, sustainability level, to act as an open humanities platform, to uh, foster the research innovation, what I called shifting from data collection to knowledge, uh, to, to knowledge management, and to uh, allow for uh, uh, the elaboration of common policies to, uh, to, to get to this uh, um, interoperable uh, ecosystem I'm speaking about. So I will skip. And as a result, uh, I can say that uh, everything that was among our needs is uh, still to be uh, considered a challenge. We have not solved completely the problems that I described to you, uh, but we learned a number of uh, effects of uh, things uh, analyzing the bigger picture and uh, the smaller situation of uh, um, the many different communities that are forming the infrastructure. And among of those uh, facts uh, we learned, uh, the lessons we learned, uh, there are ma some uh, main pillars. So, uh, one is about uh, the quality of the contributions that uh, we are uh, finding currently in, uh, the, uh, in the infrastructure. Uh, the other is about the lack of the, uh, commu of the community engagement, because not uh, every relevant part of the uh, community is uh, yet uh, aware of the importance of uh, Daria. And uh, this is about uh, the, um, the S of the SWOT analysis, so the strong parts of the, of the, uh, of the infrastructure. Among the uh, weaknesses, we have to still to find uh, a, co a, a coherent and a sustainable business model in order to provide the quality and the engagement we need from the infrastructure. And this could be realized uh, in providing more and more uh, engagement in promoting European projects, uh, in developing a national uh, seg segment of the infrastructure that should be uh, um, linked to the uh, European level. Uh, and uh, about uh, the uh, possible uh, pitfalls and uh, the possible uh, bottlenecks uh, we found uh, in this uh, kind of analysis, uh, we consider to be the, the, the most important the fact that Daria, uh, which is, seems to be working at the general level, at the domain level is still considered as an external body. So they are not perceiving us to be part of the community, uh, so to say. And so this uh, could be a, a major problem in order to have the quality we need, in order to have the community engagement we need, and in order to create this evaluation framework we need to uh, be, uh, as I said, sustainable. I will skip everything, and this is my last uh, slide. The solution we uh, are now trying to uh, promote is to learn uh, the lessons uh, from the communities, for example, medieval historians, to bring those lessons to the national level and now trying to link the national level with the, act the same activities that are going on at the international, at the European level, in particular about the working groups that are connected to the activities of given research uh, communities and most of all about the sustainability issues we are facing. So, some, uh, sorry for being really, really uh, long, and if you have doubts or questions, I'm here to answer to you. Thank you. <laughs>